In this class, we are going to talk about JIT. JIT is a source code version management system and it's distributed and free. So, what's the source code management system? There are many of them. We already looked at CVS, there's Perforce, Mercurial, SVN, HG, Fossil, and there are many choices, and all of them, most of them are free. The ones on the left side, and you have to buy Perforce. So, what is, uh, why do you need version control, and what is the concept behind it? So, the thing is, you need to keep backup of all your files and track all the changes ever made by and who made the changes and when and why. And you can go back to the file as they were before. Something goes wrong, you can always go back and find a working version. That's called a repository. That's how you make backup of the. Uh, the problem with backup is it just doesn't track who made what change. It just has a copy of a backup on a CD or a hard disk. But you want a backup along with the version numbers. And you want multiple people to be updating the files and finding out who changed what and you can copy changes without actually disrupting your workflow. So the first concept is a repository where you keep a copy of all the files and people are given access to it over the internet using sec secure shell or something so that only people who allowed access can act actually access the repository and they can copy files out of it or put files in it and find out who changed what. So that's a repository and then you can have multiple repositories and they could be distributed in case of JIT that means there are multiple repositories they are all out of sync and once in a while they sync up and everybody has some snapshot of the repository and the, the main concept is head so file has multiple versions so every time you change a file you get a new version number a head is a current version the one you are working on one you on your disk that's called a head and you can change the versions and stuff like that but head is the the current version or the latest version of the file and then you can also have alternate versions of the file say you want to make a change for somebody but you don't want to uh, make it permanently for other people to actually get affected by it so you make a branch so branch is only uh, available only if you look on the branch say you want to make a bug fix or something or back bug fix you can do that using a branch and what are the operations you can check out a file and after you make changes you check it in and that's called commit and then you send it for review so review is basically people send you comments and then you check it in and you can do a diff diff means you can diff between two versions of a file or two branches and find out what changed where and who changed it and version numbers of course and conflicts conflicts happen when two people have changed two different changes on two different branches of the same file and then you have to decide which one is the right change that's called resolving and then you can merge you can take one branch and copy all the changes into another branch that's called merging then you add a file and then stash means basically you have made changes but you don't want it to affect and you want to go back to the pristine uh, copy of, the, of your checked out code then you, st you stash away your changes then you work on the, the changes on the server then you once you're done with the server changes you can go back and unstash your stuff that's uh, specific to JIT and then revert means you made changes but you don't want them then you revert back to the version that you want to and if you don't need a file to be tracked in the repository remove it but rep uh, repository doesn't want delete it, it will keep a copy in the in somewhere in the attic so that if you really need it it can actually give it to you on so it's not there in, at a current date but in the past it could be there and the other two concepts are push and pull you push your changes to the server and you pull other people's changes from the server back to your your sandbox and also you can push from one repository to another repository and CVS is a old system from 1990s it's GPL tracks individual files and is based on RCS it's good for personal repository single office and it's the branching is very hard in CVS but it works and it's on Windows it has like some idiosyncrasies and if you're using it to learn it it's available on Sigwin and on Linux Windows everywhere and JIT is new it's 2005 it's again GPL free source code and basically Linus Trovals wrote it for Linux when they're working with a system for li sharing Linux source code and they were stuck with some uh, tool that they couldn't manage so then they Linus just wrote it from scratch and that's how we got JIT it's good for tracking changes it doesn't track individual file it, it tracks change lists and it uses SHA hash to compute changes so that and it's just completely distributed so what happens is different workers can have different copies of, of multiple copies of repository and they can push uh, changes from one repository to another repository and they can be sharing code across 
time and space so that means that you may actually push to your local repository and later on sync your repository to another repository uh, assuming you have permissions to do it and then uh, uh, you can push CL from repo to repo and branching is very fast so it's used all, all the time by Linux and it's done in GitHub and it's open source so basically branching means if you want to test some changes in the Linux source code you can just say branch make a branch of the head of whichever branch you're working on and then merge your changes once that you think are useful and otherwise delete the branch after you're done so JIT is very fast it's distributed and it's free and it's developed by Linus and all the people who are working on the uh, on the JIT and you can have multiple repos it's lightweight instant branching and it's change based uh, changeless patch based not file based like CVS or some of the older systems so let's look at the concepts in JIT JIT has a concept of staging which is an additional layer between committing so you have a working copy and then you add it to the stage that means you're going to send it to the repository before you push it you add it all the changes that you want to send to, change to se send to the repository then you commit the thing so that's an extra layer in the in the process of checking in code which is not done in the older CVS so how are the files so originally you have a file which is untracked you create a file on your disk then once you add it to uh, it becomes unmodified file you add it to the system JIT, JIT knows about it then once you edit the file it's called modified then you stage it it becomes stage and once you commit the stage the file becomes unmodified again so the file currently see, uh, JIT will say it's not modified and then you can if you remove a file from JIT it becomes an untracked file again the untracked files are basically files in your system on your sandbox that JIT doesn't know about and doesn't care so how does JIT uh, keep track of changes first of all you need to install download and install JIT on Windows you can get JIT key with UI you go to any directory CD your source directory tilde as your home and you say JIT init dot that makes a local repository in, in the current directory dot JIT folder then you say JIT add dot that means add everything in the current folder into JIT then there's a file called dot JIT ignore you can give patterns one per line of what files to ignore for example you don't want to check in dot exe files then then after say you want to modify some file some source code main dot c you say vi main dot c whatever and after you make changes you can say JIT commit minus m and give some comment why you change and then it goes back into the repository this is your local repo so far and then you can make another repo say you make it on slash temp project dot jit so you say jit clone minus bear uh, so dot jit into slash temp project dot jit so now we got another copy of the repository and then you can copy from your repo to another repo using scp scp secure copy across the network and recursively so slash temp project dot jit to ssh to another server that's one way of copying around your repository across the network and then you can also do and if you're a regular but not really in charge of the repository you can only have read and write permission you can jit push and pull from a repository you can push to the using the SSH protocol from the server and this this jit project and then you can get your changes back from this project into the local directory so how do the repos work so your local directory added it goes to the staging and commit it it goes to the local repository and then you push it it goes to the remote repository and then from the remote repository you push JIT pull and it get into your working directory or you could do JIT fetch and then it comes to the local repository from the f uh, local repository you can merge it or you can do JIT pull minus rebase and get stuff directly to your working directory or you can do a JIT fetch followed by JIT rebase so there are many options or ways of doing it it's kind of confusing in the beginning but remember that JIT is changeless base and it's uh, distributed repos so it might be confusing so you can't really push one file you have to create a change list and push that change list to another server so if you have a team it's slightly more different process so basically you have a repository with code hosting system and then you have a two servers like a test server and a master server so what you do is the developers will check out a clone the repository and uh, the sandbox into a sandbox make a branch and then and then in a branch develop a feature and when a feature is ready they'll push it so all the developers are pulling code from the 
repository and there will be somebody making sure that they have permissions to do it or you can have another person another repository where they push and then the 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 person who built the builder actually will push from one repository to the master repository so you can have many more systems so jib doesn't really provide the permission system it only provides the the changeless pushing and pulling system so how does code reviews how to handle it so there's a program called jared which is used for uh, doing code reviews so you have a build server and then you have an authoritative repository and a another repository in which you can push your changes. Developers push changes into the repository and the reviewer will actually look at the changes in the in the pending changes in the repo in the current uh, repository by developers and he'll approve the changes and approve ch changes he will push into the, uh, the the master repository so that they get pushed onto the the test server and to eventually to the the, the the serving servers to external world. So this kind of process you can have for reviewing code. And what do you do? Uh, temporary change. If you make a change, but you don't want to really, you want to get also get new changes in, but you don't want to mix up changes. So you use this stash, and JIT stash, and then JIT stash. It will keep it in a separate uh, bundle, and then when you are when you're done with your some other changes, you can get your stash back with a JIT stash apply. Then you get branching. Branching is really common in JIT. It was not common before JIT. So you can create a branch called tests. Then you can check out that when you ch ch check out test, it means you go to that branch. So your your current uh, uh, sandbox will be the test branch. Then you check out do your testing here. Then you check out the master branch. Now you now you merge the test branch into the master branch, and then again you delete the branch test after you're done. So that's a branching uh, high level. And the easiest way to learn is to try all these. And if you ever stuck, just type in the JIT error message into into uh, Google and you'll see what uh, uh, what other people have solved using the JIT commands and if you have multiple branches you can actually pull branches uh, from one one branch to another branch so you can say there's a development branch there's a feature branch release branch and a master branch so this happens in a company where you have multiple products and multiple versions of the software same uh, shared code and then there's stable and unstable and release so all this will be you can integrate one change list from one to another another branch so how does it how does JIT manage all the change list it uses SSH, SHA1 that's a hash a secure hash of the changes of the commit objects so here's a head the reference the current head and there's a current branch and it's called a master branch and every every change list has a SSH, SHA1 hash but the thing is the long the hash is really long so you just print the last five hex digits of the hash to uniquely identify the change list and the commit objects identified by the hash so these are the numbers and the child points to the parent and this another branch maintenance branch may be behind and then it and then the first it goes into staging then the files you see in a working directory are what you see so let's look at a JIT log and this is a JIT log and a minus one line minus abbreviate commit minus all minus graph decorate and there are lots of options you can find them online in Google for all, seeing all kinds of help so the way it looks is that it shows you the mas local branches master branch the current branch and the tags you can put tags and name the, give names to the branches you can also have remote branches and eventually you can see that eventually st it started with the initial empty commit of the empty file and they're going up and the best way to read is to use a JIT key or JIT UI or something. And once you are comfortable understanding it, just you should uh, switch to the command line JIT. How does the data flow work? And also you can fork. What is fork? Fork is making a copy of the, uh, the repo repository, and you can have fork repo. If you look at GitHub, it says fork. This repository that means make a copy. So you make a fork, then you pull a make a pull request. So in this case you see that you're working directly at the bottom and you add files to the staging area and remove files from the staging area and you can reset that means reset the he head to remove make un undo your changes and then the status is unmodified added modified deleted renamed copied these are the possible states of a file then we commit it goes into a local repository then you push it to the remote remote repository then you fetch it back and you merge it into your working directory and then 
uh, you can branch and tag and merge on the local repository and then you can push your changes to the and then there will be other repositories which are folks of your copies of your repository so let's look at UI another UI so this is a JITK UI and it again shows you the it shows you the the branch the master branch out here and the commit numbers and first commit third commit second commit and who made the commit and what date they made the commit and the parent the commit what was the change before and what was the change now and what are the branches on this node and here you see the diff of the in the change list so you can see the diff this is the unified diff it shows what was added and what was deleted and then here you can see the files that are affected so this is a JITK UI just play around with it and you'll see you can make a sandbox and it's completely lightweight so what you do is you start JITK create a JIT in it create a create a folder add some files make some changes and see what happens or you can go to JITK uh, GitHub and look at all the way all what other people are doing and for JIT there's a JIT UI for commit also so they unstaged unstaged changes like in this file and then you and you can see that what you change out here and it shows the difference between your version the base version and the remote version and then you can run merge and the different tools you can run by right clicking and and then when you stage it it will come here then you then you you, you put some comments and explain what you change then you commit and then you push so that's a basic flow in JIT and there's a lot of stuff online so if you want to play around there's a free repository in github and bitbucket and you need to put in your public key and set it, uh, set up by logging and using your email id and stuff using chrome on a ui and then you can use it to your local computer to use jit program to to connect to those servers and push and pull files from the server and there's a lot of help online but it's slightly confusing so for jit it's really confusing too so you start with jitscm.com and basically look for some simple explanation and the best way to learn is by playing around with it. Thank you.